you guys bought some merchandise for me last week, you're going to want to watch the end of this video. And other than that, hot damn, here we go with another good one. Come on, baby, stay behind me. Oh, baby! Oh! Warning, we're just having fun. If you take stuff too serious, this channel may not be for you, buddy. Well, if you're looking for someone to watch on YouTube who's just a damn mess, look no further. You found them. I'll get me some uh, superpowers here from my old burrito from the Taco Boy. Get energized up because I'm about to whip the hell out of this video. I've been getting whipped for two days around here. About time I whipped something. Anyone want to guess what this carburetor goes to? Yeehaw. More like ye ain't running worth the deadly. She's been running pretty good, guys. Actually, last week, what we do? Uh, took this baby on a road trip. Loaded her down 1,200 pounds. 100K shirt coming in hot. Yeehaw t-shirt available now. I think truck t-shirts, travel all, sitting on your butt. Logo, logo. Here we go, round two. One side started. Money. That ain't local honey, folks, all right? That's some fresh 8090, but she's hitting down here, so we may have to do a little trimming. I can't believe none of the stuff was working right. Uh-oh, she's smoking, something popped. I don't know we'll make it home, but it <laughs> <laughs> So we got right at 1,100 pounds here. We've got our uh, silver play button presented to Puddin's Fab Shop for passing 100,000 subscribers. She did pretty good. We don't do a lot of daily driving with 1,200 pounds in the back. Uh, guys, on that road trip, I mean, literally a block from the house, it kinda, you know what I mean? Right after I did that, she pretty well smoothed out though, and I came here and we did the stickers and everything else. So the, the next day I go out there and she she don't fire up good. Now once it fires up, it does all right. I do a little running around. She starts leaving me in little Oklahoma City over there where traffic's coming from everywhere. Man, she's just dying out there in the road and I just push in the clutch, gliding along, she'll fire back up. So I knew something's going on with the carburetor. So I come out here yesterday, gonna fire up. She don't wanna fire up. That's why that thing's taken apart. When I look down in there and work the accelerator pump, pump no pumpy. Squirt or no squirty. The accelerator was not accelerating. Guys, it wasn't spraying no fuel. Get a little dribble here or there. Uh, as soon as I put some Gitter Done 91 down her, about like so, she busted right off, no problem. And the vacuum from the engine was pulling fuel through her to keep her running. I take her apart. Take my brake clean. I'm gonna try to spray out the port around the accelerator pump. She seems clogged. I go to take out the little jet thingamajig, whatever you call it down in there. She was real nice to me and stripped out. So I did I did what anyone with a carburetor issue would do. I called Uncle Rick. If you ain't got Uncle Rick, you're missing out. Uncle Rick, by the way, y'all tell me about the roundy round cars. Yeah, Uncle Rick was a champion. Two, three. His motor was never at less than 15,000 RPMs. Oh, that's a true story. So I asked him, I said, hey, people talk about swapping the, the Ford two barrels on there or something or another. He said, yeah, look for one from a 70s Ford. I called O'Reilly's. He said, I have one tomorrow at noon for you from a 73 Mustang with a 302. I ain't even looked at the picture of the thing. I just ordered it. It should be here sometime today. <laughs> no planning, no pictures. Order a carburetor, hope you can get her going. It's about one o'clock now. I'm supposed to drive it this evening to get the exhaust done, by the way. Hey, I Megan. Hey, Megan. It's Puddin. Puddin's Fab Shop. Yeah. Hey, can uh, 
Sir Christopher was supposed to order me a carburetor and okay. yeah and like a flange gasket or something I believe it's your also carburetor will be on its way so you know what they say if you can't drive them tow them Woo! <laughs> I'm probably way too excited to put this on here probably way more excited than I should be anyhow we got a tow bar here my buddy Jesse brought it to me she set up for a two inch ball so we got a couple things around here that can tow her my side set up for pivot in and their side set up for the the pivot in so with a little welding and imagination we can get her on there can't we this end's adjustable as you can see she's almost spread out just enough but not quite i know some of you are thinking do not put that on there it's going to look tacky what you have to realize are the mini movers which is what they call these little e-hauls they came from u-haul with that on there okay so we're just putting it back how it should have been. If you have OCD, turn away. We need to get in our old metal scrap cabinet here. And somewhere or another, in the right box, there's some 3 8 plate scrap. Kind of like, not that. Like that. Perfecto. Say it ain't so. It's almost like it's meant to be that's what we got going on in this video guys more yeehaw stuff we're gonna get the tow bar on we're gonna see if she'll start running again depending on what carburetor road we go i still want to have the exhaust fixed and we got blinkers and just a list of stuff more more yeehaw goodness because she's adjustable all we really need to do is take this to the bench really all we got to do is decide how we want to shape our tabs We're gonna find center. We're gonna find center. We're gonna draw us a straight line right down the middle. We're gonna decide what radius we want to end our tab in. Inch and three quarter looks perfect. Right angle. We're kind of looking like this here. Now we're just gonna kind of connect a point to a point. Straight edge one. Straight edge two. Now we got us a tab to cut, a shape to cut. A line to follow. And holster that weapon of choice. Mine's the, the old angle grinder deluxe. Give her the power. Got a rough cut out. Thought I was gonna have to whip somebody for a second. Well, I ain't joking neither. I swore I heard someone say my name. They're about to find out if old pudding was about it, about it. Uh oh. Quick little cleanup. She ain't perfect. But this whole damn truck ain't perfect. Got another one. A little hot still, but wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Now, we're gonna find our shape of this thing. We're gonna use our super fancy cardboard. Just gonna draw me a little line down the middle there to say that's center. And I'm just gonna kinda hold that there to what I say is center. And come up with something about like so. Cut that out. A little test fit action, pretty snug. My mark right here, that's gonna be our stopping point. Now we line our lines up. We kind of even up our stopping points right back there. We give that baby a trace. Little cords acting up again. As you grind, guys, be sure to aim it towards your crate motor and windshield. <laughs> It'll be all right. The fit-up's not perfect, but she's pretty snug, and, well, that welder will make up that gap. We ain't too worried about it, so I'm going to trace this to the tab and cut us another. 
Now it's time for a little hole drilling. We're a mark right there at our crosshairs. No, we're not. <laughs> Drill us a little pilot there. Once our tab's lined up, we're gonna tack that puppy. She's actually pretty straight. She could use a, we could peck on her that away once. Got her tacked up where we want it. Time to weld this baby up. That's a steaming hot caterpillar right there, folks. She's a little toasty. Stinky out of here. Man, that stinks. Ejecto welding helmet. Huh? What do you think about that piece of tape I've had on there for a week? I was working in the merch building the other day. Felt something tap my hat, and I hear a little hot ride back there giggling. <laughs> she said, Daddy, you got something on your hat. I took my hat, checked it. I love you, Dad. You know how to make me melt, girl. Them little kids will get you every time. Damn dirt daubers on everything. Hey, this thing's got the warnings and everything else. It'll kind of match, won't it? She's welded up. She's ready to adjust out, so let's get something to loosen these. I'm going to use a two-inch ball rated for at least 5,000 pounds on this buckaroo. She got them stud plates in her where we just got to worry about loosening these up here. Loosen those up and, oh yeah, there we go. I probably don't have some uh, half inch bolts. We may, with those tabs like that and pulling on it and a bolt sideways, we just may, may have created a bolt shearing device. That is a possibility. They don't make safety chains for nothing, am I right, folks? There's one. Boom! Where's all the engineers at? Are we gonna shear them bolts? Hypothetically speaking, if I'm doing a buck 20 in the travel off and power break it with them full disc brakes all the way around, are we gonna shear them bolts and send that yeehaw into the back of old Edna? Now this can be off, so we're gonna have to get us a tape measure and get her squared up. Once we square it up, we're gonna zip her down. 29 and 5 eighths. 29 and 3 quarter, 29 and 11 sixteenths, 29 and 11 sixteenths, 46 on the money, 46 on the money. Once this flips up, it's going to look so damn obnoxious. This thing's going to look like it belongs in the damn Jurassic Park or something. Oh, yeah, you, you look good, baby. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. <laughs> she looks like something anyhow. Now, here's the thing, though, guys. It's, I don't really plan on keeping that on there okay. I think it's funny. They did have them. I got to try it because I've never flat-toed anything, so I, I'm just curious. But... What can you say about her? She's on there. We're gonna flat tow this thing though. We need to be able to use the blinkers and the brake lights and everything at the back. So we need to get her wired up too. So when we flat tow this, we're basically turning this into a trailer. So we need like a trailer plug. We need a splicer into the, the factory wiring where we get the lights back there working like she's a trailer. Shouldn't be very complicated. 
Them U-Haul folks back in the day, they were some uh, wiring experts. Where you need a set of these, if you know what I mean. Last video I showed cutting out some old stuff from the back. Let's kind of look at what we have going on up here. I'll snip that yellow wire right there. It's coming out of a little guillotine. And same for that orange one. Now those go over from there to here with even more guillotines. And this runs all the way to the back of the truck. That's it there at the very back. So they had it spliced in back there. They've got it spliced in up here. I don't know what they're trying to accomplish, guys. I know the next time I'm actually underneath this thing, I'm taking out this whole cable, so I'm going to cut it as far as I can down. I'm going to cut her down here. Now we got that out of there. Next, I got this governor here. Now, some of y'all were concerned I actually had this thing hooked up to that carburetor, and that's what was slowing me down. And trust me, she ain't been hooked up. So this governor uses power. It takes your uh, speedometer cable input, lets it know. And this was basically just hooked up to your little throttle lever where that thing could only go so far to slow you down. Oh, so we're going to disconnect that connector. I'm just going to kind of twist her up and tuck her down here. And then this is wrapped all the way around here. And the harness for this governor wraps through all this. Comes over here. We've got her on a wire nut going into our coil. So instead of messing up them threads or messing with that rusty nut, I'm just going to cut that off there because that's where they chose to rob 12 volts from. The other side was hooked up to the coil, which I also don't quite understand because you shouldn't be able to ground off there. We cut her anyhow. And the last wire is going in here, which is actually a factory wire that they butt splice to. That's a good thick wire too, so it was originally meant to power something pretty beefy. So there we go. We ain't got that little mess in there anymore. Next, we got this orange wire just floating around doing whatever the heck it wants. That goes to this guillotine. That's from their relay they add. So this is your, your power coming from the alternator. That's the power going out of the relay. This one comes from the headlight switch. So when you turn your headlight switch on, this relay lets that power flow through. She goes through two circuit breakers, and then those two circuit breakers feed all the running lights on this thing. Basically, I'm saying we don't need that damn orange wire. Here's the easiest way I can think to do this, guys. The red and the yellow feed the blinkers and the brake lights to the back, so there's our blinkers and our brakes. We can splice in there. And like I said, this brown wire right here just turns on this relay that turns on all running lights. So we should be able to splice into our yellow, our red, our brown, and then have brake lights, blinkers, and just turn on all the running lights. Simple enough. Now, I thought we were gonna uh, wire wire her up anyhow. Bought this full little wiring kit for the extra wiring, and she's supposed to have the trailer end on her, and well, someone was nice and probably cut the end off and then returned it, so there ain't an end in there, so I might have to take that back, but hmm. Just because we ain't got our wire don't mean we can't test it. Did someone say a two-inch ball? <laughs> That's exactly what you want to see right there. Lifted Corolla, lowered truck. Don't worry about that angle. If she'll latch, she'll tow. Oh yeah. If we can somehow turn around right in here and get headed back that way, she'll be doing pretty good. <laughs> I like it guys.
<laughs> this feels so damn sketchy. I don't know what just happened. I was turning the yeehaw felt sideways. I was going forward, trying to turn. It was doing a. Uh, felt like I was on a damn uh, skating rink. Boy, she looks good though, don't she? <laughs> so it does not like sharp, sharp turns, okay? Uh, Torola has plenty of power. That's why she's the Torola. But I, I can definitely tell she's back there, especially a even break in. Yeah. That nice angle, that tow bar, she'll just lift the back tires off the ground, it feels like. See, when I turn sharp, that thing like helps push the back end around or something. So she'll tow it, because she's the tow roller. Whether we're eating tomatoes hooked to a tow bar uh, with some toenails on the tow lit paper, she'll tow, tow, tow. Uh, hell, we can go to if you don't like Earth, we can go to Pluto. <laughs> but we, we may have to hook this SOB behind the travel law and take her for a spin. Oh, well, I wish I would have had the camera rolling for that one. I actually backed her in in one shot. I don't have depth perception, guys. I don't push my luck back in this end because I don't need to knock that off jack stands again. <laughs> Tow bar is a success until we get bolts and the stuff to finish up the wiring. But the carburetor did show up. What in the big mouth Billy Bass of a carburetor we got going on here? Woo, electric choke. Guys, when I'm telling you I didn't look at a picture of this thing, I didn't even look at a picture of it. I just said, send it. Let's see what happens. It was remanufactured. She's quality. She looks fairly simple. Nice and clean. How many accelerating whatever pumps we got on this thing? Got the damned old power valve. Slash jets this puppy got. Kind of CFMs you flowing. <laughs> Y'all wanna break this down? The Ford 302 equals roughly, give or take point some liters, 4.9 liter ish. The four cylinder and the Yeehaw is a 2.3. So we can conclude if the 4.9 makes 740 horsepower that we're going to divide it roughly by 2 for 370 horsepower. But to achieve the 740, if we need to flow 750 CFM, then we also need to divide that by 2, which is going to get us down to 375 ultimately we know to flow 375 to make 370 which is equal or greater to the 4.9 liter carburetor's gonna need some more what in the world well sockets dropping nuts out of there so am I. I'm just dropping nuts. Let me pull them bolts. Now this, and pliers are always handy in the front pocket. There we go. It'll bolt on. Maybe after we turn her backwards and flip her around, that ain't gonna bolt on there. Get that bracket out of her way. It looks like this big old mouth baby would fit on there if that uh, throttle linkage right there wasn't hanging down. It's hitting that right there, but I think we can shave that off there, guys. I think we got to do it. I, I don't know what it takes to tune one of these for this, but at this point, I feel like we got to try it. We're going to start with a top quality tape job to protect our little 2.3 that could. There's one blade down. So there's our main chunk right there. Oh, 
<laughs> Boy, howdy, I think it is. <laughs> it wasn't much. That little stub right there is the Ford's warning. Don't you put that big old carburetor on here. Just look at that flange size and that flange size. <laughs> I think I've seen a gasket in here. Damn right, that ain't a gasket. That's a piece of tar map. That's a damn quarter inch tunnel ram spacer. Looks like we got some reading to do. Tag your vacuum lines. Boy, they're fancy. Tunnel ram. Carburetor. That probably picked us up even more clearance. Oh yeah, before we do that, let's get our tie wire out since we're doing redneck stuff. I believe from the factory your throttle would push that throttle lever. Well, you see how that just did the flip-flop forward? That's a problem. Uh, that would probably hook up to your downshift cable or something like that. Point is, we don't need it flopping around. So we can just, as long as it stays together, it'll be fine. So we can find a way to... Just a little piece there with a few tight twists. That's all she needs. Nothing overly special. A little snipping. Tap that pigtail down where she don't scratch the piss out of you later on and see yeah it's a little redneck but better than it flopping around boom see if some bolts won't line up and start where to put my dang old specialty wrench there she is if you're gonna mess with little mini trucks these little carburetors whatever get you a 12 millimeter give her a bend give her a bend shave her a little bit keep her slick slick and slim up the middle and you'll you'll appreciate her Uh-oh. Something must be hitting in there because we can't open. That shouldn't be hitting nothing. Ain't nothing for it to hit, damn it. Other than the gasket. That's because it's hitting the gasket. <laughs> that may be a problem. It's also probably why that gasket right there says front and up. To let you know that goes on the front and that side is up front up round two or three hell maybe we're on four at this point i don't know what the hell over she still ain't opening i'm done thinking with my butt guys I had that carburetor flipped around but i had her flipped around because she won't go that way she's only gonna go this way which means technically she's on backwards if we turn this gasket so this is our new front well she ain't gonna seal if we turn that thing backwards sure it's gonna be hard to get her to seal uh, even though it bolts up because that's kind of got the two that stick out like legs or whatever like that there well then you turn that backwards and you try to get some sealing going in between there and it's gonna be pain that electric choke was off there then she should just sit right down on maybe i'll look and see if uh it's possible to convert that thing from the electric choke. Just take that whole assembly off the side. There she went. Hey, speaking of merchandise, can I show you guys and tell you guys about these sweet shirts we got right here called the Puddin's Fab Shop. We hauled butt to 100K with y'all's favorite, the Yeehaw, on it. If I can be totally honest with you guys, I bought a ton of those. If I can be totally honest with you guys, they're not selling very well. <laughs> The shirt I did with the just the yeehaw on it, she's pretty well selling out. It's going like crazy. But this 100K one, uh, not so much. Not that I expect to sell them all right away, but more than four would be nice. I sold more than four, but y'all get what I'm saying here. They ain't selling like I thought they were gonna. Y'all ate up them 50K shirts. I, I said 50K, y'all said 50K all day. I'm actually taking these to my post office ladies because they take good care of me. Uh, but guys, travel all shirts, logo shirts, truck shirts, all the stickers. I mean, all the goodies, we've got them. So get your orders in. We're, we're cranking these babies out. And me and the family, we sure appreciate the support from you guys. These are good quality shirts too, guys. This ain't no, no middle of the mall hodgepodge, okay? That's why it takes me a while to get them. I get good quality stuff. And that's what I sell, so. Boy, I'm like a damn game of ping pong guys just going back and forth here i started to strip down the little japanese one to rebuild it and clean it and you know good and well we had to use our 
sweet patina get gone and well guys i think i wasted it because i think i made up my mind and we are going to put this this ford one on there i think we're just going to pull off this choke assembly right there we got a choke assembly when she's cold and you finally get her started you just hold that foot down for a couple minutes let her warm up she'll be all right uncle rick stopped by he used to run the stock class out there and he had one of these left over from the stock class days and he said this come on one of the rangers look at this high performance piece if you're thinking that ain't high performance compared to that thing that's on there now it damn sure is i think i'm gonna pull that manifold off there real quick and see if this even fits well we got a heat shield in the way of this one boy if they ever have a word on youtube for who's all over the damn place i'm gonna win that one okay love you drive good i have sprayed those a couple times i'm sure i've cooked her off there though oh that one was loose oh baby come on every single one of them i can't believe it i thought surely one of them would be a problem Get this beefcake supreme up out of here. Oh, damn, she's heavy. That son of a block looks like it belongs on a damn boat, not a high performance yeehaw. That's the guy she tells you not to worry about. That's you. Now, he said this is a factory piece from a ranger. I'm just kind of wondering where the collector's going to end up pointing at. I couldn't tell if it was going to actually fit or not. Get a couple bolts started here. So it fits, but she's direct hit to the frame rail. But I think if we were to kind of, this collector area, which we're deleting that nipple right there anyhow, if we kind of pie cut that and just kind of took her that away some, there should be plenty of room to run some damn two inch exhaust up through there. What do y'all think? We give her a pie cut, kind of squeeze her that away. A little tack tack and see if it'll fit. All right, about the worst marks you could put on there. I just put on there. I say the worst ones cause I put about 17 on there, but don't worry about that. I don't know which one I'm looking at, kinda, maybe. Don't be scared. Guys, it's just metal. If we end up with a gap, we can weld a gap. <laughs> Boy, I pert near roughly know where I'm going here. Just give me a damn cutoff wheel, I'll get her. That's not a five. You wanna hit something? Huh? You hitting something? We're gonna hit the frame rail. Um, just take them studs and everything. Oh, oh, oh. Uncle Rick with more performance parts. See what happens. All right. Here we go, got her cut. See how we can kind of that away. Pretty easy. May not be enough. We'll check her, slice her, check her slicer when we get it where we're happy we'll tack her shove that over and we're headed in the right direction but we're not quite there we need to take probably about double of what we just did she's doing pretty good i think she needs just a hair more custom we could go around there and weld that all up you can see she's nice and tight well, except for down there. That's what some people may not show you. There's the reality of what we just did. Just kind of with the marker. But that's okay, guys. That's still weldable. In fact, we're going to add a slice to it. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. My grinder won't fit straight, but we'll just do it at a slight angle. It'll work. Angle cut. Next, you want a pecker big enough to get the job done. We're just gonna kind of tap those down. I 
I'm pretty happy with that guys. Now I don't know how much it's gonna pick up on the camera, but the, the height difference was probably 3 sixteenths, maybe borderline quarter inch difference. And now we're talking about maybe a 16th. So yeah, we still got a feel in between there, but we ain't dropping, doing this crazy angle, whatever. Just a few tacks on it and I'm gonna leave it guys. I'm gonna mock her up real quick. I think that's the angle we need and boom, that's that. But I ain't gonna weld her up yet guys because when we go to build exhaust for this thing, if I can still somehow get her done tomorrow, uh, you know, if that angle ain't right and he wants to cut it or if we need to angle it some more or adjust it, cut a few tacks, you know, remove a little more material and work it again. Super easy to get on and off, so best to leave it like that. Get the exhaust built, then we can pull it back off, finish her up. Back in the morning doing performance yeehaw stuff. I planned on having exhaust built and fixing blinkers, and instead we're putting on big carburetors and headers. Not a bad trade. We're going to start with void and warranties, okay? Well, we're going to do a... Uh, uh, uh... <laughs> with a choke delete, damn it. That's what we're going to do. Like I say, that old foot will hold that baby warm. Three screws, two clips. We can take that whole thing off now. It's half electric, but it still looks like it uses exhaust gas. I don't know who. One of y'all know all about these carburetors, not me. Is that a vacuum port? So we may need to plug that somehow. That explains why there's a tiny gasket there. And by somehow, I mean for now, I'll, I'll gladly take the damn thing. I don't care. If I come to find out we don't need that at all, you damn right I'll mix up some JB Weld and put it up in there. Next, we got Operation Stud Distraction. We're gonna put two nuts on one stud. We're gonna tighten them down into each other. Tight! We're gonna put our wrench on this bottom nut and we're just gonna spin that stud clean out of there. Now if this was Operation Stud Distraction, I'll tell you guys just to watch me. <laughs> These are standard threads. They're not metric. Our bolts on ours, standard. So I don't know if they're drilling and tapping this or what. I'm going to stuff her with the rag. We're going to drop her full of some old rapid tap cutting fluid. Generous droppings there. And we're just going to hope that. Well, that ain't going to spin. Y'all really want to step up the risk a little bit? We'll step her up. This adapter right here is made for to convert impact to tap. Oh, baby. Maybe we did good there. Hit her with the blowy. Boy, that that damn tap fluid smells good. Smells like like winter Christmas time. Did y'all get a little looby dooby on your face or what? I think that may work. We won't know until we actually put some torque on this and see if those pull out. So there's that. I'm gonna knock out the other three real quick, guys. We're gonna clean up the bottoms of these old studs, take them for a ride on the wire wheel. This is commitment here. She gets a drop of red. It's my old homemade gasket. Don't y'all worry about that. Now this thing, that's plugged on the back, so we're just gonna drop her down on there. Oh baby, little tunnel ram. A little tunnel ram, who could? So let's see if we accomplish what we're trying to accomplish here. Does she clear? Oh baby, bam! That's what we want, a carburetor that's about a quarter of the size of the whole engine. Front up, so we finally got this damn thing on there right. And drop us a washer on there. Get us a nut. Just gonna snug them for now. I got to thinking about that port and since that exhaust gas vents into there to help uh, heat that, I guarantee you that just lets that exhaust flow through there where it basically don't deadhead in there. So it ain't gonna be, we're not gonna use it. Got her tightened down. She definitely clears. There ain't a whole lot to hook up on this thing. I don't know if this is the right size or not. Looky there, that's money. And uh, 
this is already running over here which I think is our only vacuum port so we're just gonna pop her right onto there we'll get some Teflon for this the 3 8 hose is gonna be way too big for that barb but if she seals she seals this what I happen to have on hand damn you gravity come on worm clamp we'll get the new fitting from the O'Reilly's this even gets a worm clamp boy that was a perfect length of hose and everything just happened to have that in the bottom of the one cabinet everything should be hooked up guys except the old throttle we don't have to have throttle to try busting it off I just want to see if this damn thing's gonna run or not I am gonna slap this on at least though We got a spark now we did cut some wires over here but surely they were not feeding our coil through that damn governor or maybe they did that way if you take the governor off the damn thing won't start for wires here is what's going down to our distributor they come out of this side so they may have actually been feeding our uh, 12 volt to our coil with that we're gonna add a jumper wire and see what she'll do I forgot I took her off to check it She's going now. She's going good. Let's see how she's going to run. A little buck nasty sounding. We may get her to run like a demon, we may blow her up, one or the other. When she did a little backfire, guys, I think I seen some smoke shoot out from underneath that carb spacer. So maybe she ain't sealed good right there, which a vacuum leak like that it's obviously gonna affect it wanting to run high like it's doing and trying to tune on her we're gonna swap this gasket out real quick and slap that car back on i don't think she's our only problem but it ain't gonna hurt to start there super easy to get on and off which i ain't i ain't mad about which that's good especially when you keep forgetting to put the metal gasket in there anyhow <laughs> Swap a big old two barrel on it, they said. <laughs> Blow her up, I said. Y'all can hear how she's running, right? She goes, uh, 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 almost dies, and she'll take it back up. Uh, I'm not a 2-3 carburetor. Not sure what in the situation and what in the tar nation's going on here, but that'd be good for Uncle Rick to listen to. He's an expert. Sounds like carburetor's a little funky to me. Uh, you know what'll make it easier, though? Being able to hear, and to be able to hear when you get exhaust on it, so we can take it this evening to get exhaust. So we're missing one thing. We need a flange for that exhaust side, but I guarantee you that header's hot right now. <laughs> Got her off there right as the old camera died. Unless you want your old fingers there to look like Freddy Krueger's face. You better wear some gloves. Let's see if we can't clean up these threads on this thing. Those weren't metric, they are now. <laughs> I thought we were going to have to build this flange, guys, but I just talked to the guy who's going to do the exhaust, and I think, I think he's got one we can modify some, so that saves us that work. I'm 
made the decision we're gonna flat tow this tonight to go have the exhaust put on it so with her tow bar ready we really need to get some lights going because that sun's already going down not only do i not have a, a trailer plug guys i do not have motivation to run plum across town to get one which is where we're about to kind of be headed as across town ain't nobody got time to go to town i know i have fun in the videos but stuff i'm actually going to use and continue to use i like to do the correct way but then at the same time sometimes we just gotta be able to get stuff done for this video because y'all don't want to hear in a video that oh you know we couldn't do that or we couldn't do this now our, our wiring harness got the the pot county rebuild bought one with no plug no problem so work or she won't And there's some redneck you just got to do on purpose maybe like a double double strand okay at least we're doing her safe double strand won't hold her a pin never would have got us an adapter here what you got for me a little drinky drink it's on oh on that broken arm it's not broken okay <laughs> she ain't running very good <laughs> give her the old kick that gonna make hey. it run better <laughs> Leave us a little slack there anyhow. And I'm going to kind of tuck this along in here. And I'm going to splice these three wires in. Uh, these two to our blinkers, this to our running lights, white's the ground. Pulled that connector apart. Got our two wires going in there to our blinkers. Grounded right there to the fender wheel. And this wire even fell apart that's going to turn on our running lights. So if we turn our headlights on, we've got our running lights here. Got a left blinker, got a right blinker. Again, that's redneck, but we're running out of daylight. I honestly don't know deadly about flat towing, so I did a Google search and asked about tying the wheel or not, because I've heard 50-50. The internet told me 50-50, so that was helpful. So I'm gonna try it without, but I'm gonna bring every flavored bungee cord I got. She pulls better if you uh, put her in drive instead of neutral, by the way. Hell, she feels fine doing 50 uphill both ways. I figure like this, guys. If we can do 50 and she stays straight, we can make this turn right here. Well, there ain't nothing else going to get in our way. Come on, baby. Stay behind me. Stay behind me and don't straight. Oh, baby. We're golden. She's a flat-toeing machine. Well, if you're going to come around me, you better shit or get off the pot because it's about to be a one lane. Got you. So we're headed to the Advanced Auto Parts. They got the stud kit in stock we need. Uh, I just realized something though. I meant to put safety chains on this. Made it to the Advanced Auto Parts. Everything's looking good, guys. So we're good to go. About halfway there. When we're in Vans, probably been an all right time to buy us a trailer plug connector, but we've gone too far now. Y'all say hi to your grandpa. He's right behind me. It's getting dark on us. We're damn near there. Boy, someone's tearing up new gravel and everything here. We're playing hell trying to get that thing back onto the lift. Uh, she just goes where she wants to go. <laughs> Throw her off the back. Oh, perfect. Yeah, she's skinny. <laughs> I ain't gonna give you guys a step-by-step -step on this thing. We're gonna just try to knock her out. But uh, he has a flange here that was pretty close, but she's gonna have to be wallered just a little bit. And uh, luckily that stud kit I just picked up, she threaded in, so we're good there. Uh, I'm gonna knock some of this out. I know I like that little table. Well, hello there, you walking afro of a dog with four legs. <laughs> Made some new friends, apparently.
Oh, baby. Y'all probably thought we were going to work on a yeehaw today and try to get it running, but you were wrong. I done turned on the uh, white girl mode switch, got me some Starbucks. We're going to go do some shopping. We went to our pl local police station and got us some of the angel tree things. I, I don't know how it works. She knows how it works. We're going to go get some Christmas presents. That's more important than getting a yeehaw running. Don't you get one with a flat tire neither. <laughs> the front one's wobbling. It'll get you every time. You can't pick a buggy. Do y'all have any idea how hard this is? But I was talking. They don't care. Just as much as you can make a kid's day, I feel like we can just let them down by getting the wrong thing. So it's kind of hard. Yeah, I literally can't take him anywhere. <laughs> literally cannot. <laughs> don't be suspicious. Don't be Player suspicious. <laughs> My dad's at Walmart again. There he is. <laughs> Oklahoma, the Sooner State. About that one. No kid wants to wear that. Shawnee. Get our brand in Walmart, get Pot County Legend, and we'd sell out on those damn things. I'm good for a Walmart trip maybe once a year. Let's just say I'm ready to get out of this place. Let's see. Someone's trying to steal what? stuff. That's it. Well, we just got trash floating. I don't know what in the. Well, it ain't damn tornado season. Y'all see that piece of trash flew in. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I was kind of on the fence if I was even gonna put this in the video, okay? Because the last thing I want, or there, and someone's gonna say it, there's always a hater, but someone's gonna be like, oh, look at Puddin just trying to be Mr. Good Guy out there, right? Toot his own horn in the video. Speaking of haters, here I am. Bill's here. <laughs> and listen, I give a damn if y'all think I'm trying to make myself look good. If I inspire one person, one person out there to go get one of them things off the angel tree and help another kid, then that's why I put this in there. Because there's kids out there who ain't gonna have a damn thing for Christmas. And if I can give a little bit forward and do that, and then inspire, like I said, one other person, I give a damn if I piss off a hundred if that one kid gets some presents. Now, I know some of y'all don't, don't give a hoot, but let me show you. Well, I didn't fire up that yeehaw for y'all last night. <laughs> it's a pretty good reason, or maybe an embarrassing reason. One of y'all caught it already. Oh, hey, watch out for your camera. This is why I said someone caught it, because look here. They didn't put those there because they were bored, okay? Those are there for a reason. Except for that one. That one don't exist. This head has a hole there, and yeah, there's a port going from in there down to there, so... When that manifold's on there, not covering those holes up, well, we just got four new exhaust leaks there. No big deal. <laughs> well, you can tell where she's leaking at. Yeah, see, it covers it a little bit. We can drill and tap that. We could... Well, y'all know what I want to do. <laughs> I want to zip her with that MIG welder because that's quick. Now, Bill don't think, it's gonna, don't think she's going to stick worth a lick. Try it on that. Bill wants me to give her a test run on that, and I'm A-OK -okay with that. So we're going to clean out one of these ports and see how well they weld up. When you have no expectations, you can't really be disappointed. I'll be damned if that didn't weld just fine. Now y'all can tell me it's going to blow out, crack out. I don't think that exhaust would do it. It didn't even get it that hot either. You want me to whoop on it? Whoop on it. Oh, yeah, it's gonna work. That'll work. Didn't even move. Don't get do it the easy way. We ain't even gotta worry about drilling and tapping. If I ain't scared to weld it, I damn sure ain't scared to wire will it. And number one right there, she's got a big old chunk of gasket left on her. That ain't gonna help nothing. Quick little grind down there, and we got one with a quick little pin there. She's kind of in the middle, so I'm hoping we can zap that real quick. I'll take that.
So he's definitely still leaking up here, guys, and it's because that flange ain't right, which is good. Uh, I'm just gonna have to get with my buddy and see if we can do something about that, because I'm right back where I started. It ain't so ear piercing, I reckon. Exhaust is leaking. Around this carburetor's wet with gas, so this is leaking. If gas is going through, it means that this is letting gas through, so it's leaking. So basically everything's going just great. That's what I'm telling you guys. So I took the top off this, whoa, baby. Your needle and seat threads down right in there. Thought maybe the float wasn't adjusted right, but I picked it up on the float, blowing air uh, in here, and you could hear her in there. Not, not real bad, but she just bypassing some. Took the float out, just put my finger on this with it still in there and pushed down and blew air in there. She was still bypassing some. So I took her out and that'll seal up. So there's only one thing between here and there. Well, and that's the little gasket. Well, that gasket's new, but she, uh, she is not the proper size, guys. Uh, that thing can just kind of flip flop around however the hell it wants. So we're gonna look through some of our leftover carb kits and see if we can't find a little bit better uh, gasket there. Literally the first one I opened up, I found a gasket that fits her perfect. Inside this carburetor is really clean, so they did a good job cleaning it at least. Drop our needle in. We're gonna give her the blow test. It's magic. Drop our float back in. She would not do that before, so that's gonna fix that problem. Only thing I know to do, guys, is drill that as a through bolt. We're gonna slap her with a coat of I'm done playing games. Then we're gonna hit her with a coat of this will never come apart again. This one already put a coat of I don't give a damn. And last but not least, we're gonna sit on the who needs a proper gasket anyways. I got a plan for this side so she can at least help seal up overnight. There we go. She's gonna run good. She's gonna run good. So I snuck out here for like five minutes yesterday. Put us a through bolt through there. Tighten them all down, got everything else hooked up, and we're still leaking gas somewhere. I mean, it's up on the carburetor, it's down over all these linkages. I mean, look at that. I actually think it's leaking down around right there, but I don't know why we're still getting gas there if our needle and seat's doing its job. Good quality stuff there on that old carburetor. Uh, you know what, for right now, let's just see if it's even gonna run. So she may be leaking. We may still have some actual carburetor issues from the reman job or something, but she was actually running. After the week we've had, we'll take her as a victory for right now. The one thing we don't even have to try to be able to move this thing, we gotta figure out something for this throttle setup, guys. This goes backwards. Then there's this triple cantilever, teeter-totter throttle setup from the factory. I got to looking on the O'Reilly's Look at this cable I just found, and I think we can make her work pretty easy. I didn't make her too spiffy, but let me show you what's going on. Back here, we just started with cutting a little square and a little metal tab. We welded it into this spot, and then we added this part on top of this lever, and that just kind of clicks down in there. Uh, so that kind of picks up on our cable, as you see there. Cable's real short. She whoop de doos around. Now, most of this is the bracket from our old uh, return spring that used to face that away. We flip-flopped her. And it was the perfect distance back, so we just added this top tab off of here, and that pretty well gets her in line right here. Then our cable, I just had to step her out just a hair with a step bit. Now, I, I don't have a C-clip here, uh, so y'all see what I did there. So here's my first time cycling it off the gas pedal. Let's see how she does. Oh, baby! She needs a return spring. 
I had a return spring. There ain't no way it's lost here in Mount Pile O crap. Drill one hole, add a spring, easy peasy. Added us a wire here off the key ignition. That way uh, our coil goes hot again off the key. Let's see if we can fire this old girl up. I'm gonna let her sit here and warm up. Then we're gonna adjust on them old idle mixture screws. the house right now guys because I got hot rods so we can't just go ripping around in this thing but I can test her back here in the field and just see how she kind of feels see if she's about the same she's definitely more responsive okay <laughs> she's definitely peppier ain't no doubt in that oh coming in hot just stuck for a second so that ain't good <laughs> there may be a little fine tuning left to do pull her out on the main road here real quick see if she has any kind of oh yeah <laughs> she was screeching them i want to see if she'll do a second gear chirp is what i want to see this little thing's a little pissed off <laughs> How much performance did we get? Well, that's gonna have to be for another video when we can do a little more testing. We'll do that after the exhaust leak gets fixed. What's funny is I started this video to fix the exhaust leak. We're kind of back where we started-ish. I've got a plan for that exhaust though. Uncle, Uncle Rick said something about a camshaft, who knows? So that's it guys. Now I mentioned if you ordered merchandise to watch till the end of the video and here's why. Uh, we were cranking out a lot of orders last week. People already saying how they ordered on Monday, got their stuff on Thursday. Well, the Postal Service brought to our attention that a handful of orders, uh, the, the package size was wrong or something. So there's a possibility that your package may get put on hold at your local post office. They may want postage due or something. Uh, if that happens, guys, get a hold of me, send me an email and we will refund you whatever it costs you to go get this thing. We ain't doing it on purpose. Uh, all I can do is try to make it right. This is part of growing. So I apologize about that. All I can do is try to make it right by you guys. So uh, like I said, get a hold of me. Now, earlier in this video, I'd said them 100K shirts weren't selling. Well, thankfully after the Yeehaw's pretty much sold, some people start buying the 100Ks. So uh, on those things, guys, I think I had like 700 printed, 700 something. Once they sell out, that, that design's never available again. So if you get 100K, that's it. No one else is ever gonna get it. it means it's special, unique. She's a rare bird, hard to find. One day you'll be able to send your grandkids to college with that t-shirt is what I'm telling you. That one may be a little far. Uh, but guys, thank you guys for the support. We're cranking this stuff out as fast as we can. I appreciate you guys watching. Now I've got to get wrapped up. I got to finish editing, play with El Ray, but I also got to get ready to go to Texas to pick something up tomorrow. Yeah, we longest longest trip so far in the travel off. I am. I think you guys are gonna like it. I think so. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Patreon. Uh, guys, I don't know. Uh, don't forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. Now my project is. Go be the best daddy ever. Boy, during this video, we just took lick after lick after lick, didn't we? Carburetor issues, exhaust issues, exhaust issues, carburetor issues. Welcome to old cars. <laughs>